Hello and welcome. I'm very pleased to invite Ascendance Flight Technology to talk about next generation aviation and particularly how the future of aviation will be more sustainable. So Jean-Christophe, welcome. Could you please give us a brief introduction about you, Ascendance, and your vision for transforming aviation? Hi, Milan. Sure. So Ascendance was funded in 2018. Uh, with one conviction that the future of aviation will be sustainable. And one mission is to develop the solution to decarbonize aviation. So today, Ascendance is developing two products. One is an aircraft, an alternative to helicopter called ATEA, that takes off vertically like uh, an helicopter and crews like an aircraft. It has very key advantage because we save up to 80% of carbon emission and we divide by four the noise. We can use it for people transportation. We can transport up to four people and we can use it with, for logistics, for medical services or surveillance. The second product we are developing is called Sterna and it is an hybrid technology compatible to any energy sources that will be the future of aviation, be it the sustainable aviation fuel or the hydrogen. And this hybrid technology today, we offer it to other aircraft manufacturers to help them to decarbonize themselves and hybridize their aircraft. Thanks for this introduction and it's really uh, a unique approach. It's commonly agreed that there's no time left to, to tackle the challenges for net zero aviation. It's fantastic to see Ascendance proposing and demonstrating a solution with a very short-term application and impact. Of course, there is no silver bullet to cope with and to move to more sustainable aviation and, and to cope with a carbon budget consistent with the Paris Agreement. We must be mindful that air traffic volume will be an active topic in the debate and today we will focus our discussion only on the technological level. It's admitted that the technological levels are split it over different parts and particularly the first one, the more impactful and the biggest one is decarbonizing the energy source by switching from fossil fuel to low carbon energy like sustainable aviation fuels and hydrogen. Secondly, on, on increasing the efficiency and with two ways, on, first on, on technology, uh, with improvement on incremental changes like on aerodynamics, materials, engine performance or with more disruptive uh, improvement with new aircraft architecture or new uh, engines and also improving efficiency with operations with flight and traffic management improvement and to make this happen actually we really need innovating and leveraging the digital continuity to make sure that all these solutions could be scalable in the ecosystem value chain. To, to really achieve a net zero emission for the overall aviation, we will for sure need a mixture of technological solutions just to be able to cover the full scope of flying vehicles. If you, you take on, on one hand a um, limited number of seats or limited range, for sure the solution electric batteries can be a solution. On the other hand, with long haul flight, the solution is to burn a cleaner fuel, either sustainable aviation fuel or in the future hydrogen. With this technological uh, solution in mind, let's refocus on hybrid and particularly what is needed today for making it happen. So Jean-Christophe, could you please tell us what challenge um, Ascendance will face in the upcoming months and years? Yes, sure. So since we signed the partnership with, um, with Capgemini, we have been um, investing a lot in the research and development. So today we develop uh, up to seven prototypes, a bit on the aircraft side or at the hybrid propulsion system itself. So today we have been uh, running some tests uh, at scale on the, um, on the hybrid propulsion system uh, for one year now. And we'll focus in the next two years on um, making fly our first prototype of the aircraft planned in uh, 2024. And from that prototype, we learn a lot on the industrialization, but also on the certification of the technology. Mm -hmm. So for the battery, for instance, uh, we know that today it's key for the certification to avoid to have some thermal runaway. Uh, it will be key also for the um, thermal uh, engine systems, for the high voltage systems. So we learn from the technology, from the test, to then better plan and be um, go deeper into the certification and industrialization mm -hmm. phase. That's really impressive that you are already scaling up just after five years of existence. So 
what made Ascendance uh, go so quick? Uh, could you just explain the role of digitalization in your development? There is many reasons. Uh, one, as you mentioned, is um, digitalization. So from day one, we uh, leverage uh, what we call a digital twin. So we modelize, we use a lot of simulation and modelization, and we iterate with a lot of experimental data. For instance, um, we use a lot of CFD for the aerodynamic, and we perform two wind tunnel testing to compare the experimental data with the modelization. Uh, same for the hybrid system. I mentioned previously that we have a um, full size test bench and each time we go deeper and deeper in the detail of the modelization to be able to go quicker to the certification and to go at a higher speed for the next uh, step of the development. Another reason is also to leverage the capabilities of our partners. For instance, Capgemini, we got a lot of discussion on different areas of development. Digitalization is one, but manufacturing is also one. And I, I think as a French startup um, and with regard to the history of French aviation, we have a, a very, very um, amazing uh, ecosystem that we need as a startup leverage to be competitive and to to go as quick as possible to the market. Indeed, it's only two years we are partnering together, but uh, to, be, to be honest, it's gone so fast, this, this period. And we face different amazing period, both with uh, human and engineering challenges. Dealing with uh, ascendance prototypes, it's for sure pushing the technical limits and also bringing lots of unforeseeable situation. And uh, everybody on the project has to work out of its comfort zone and to invest personally to learn as quickly as possible. So that's really a great period. Initially, we thought it was impossible, but they did it. I could have talked about different topics. We've, we've treated on hydrogen, hybridization, batteries, acoustics, and I've chosen only two examples which are more rep representative. The first example is on wind tunnel test campaign, which is really a key step in the development process and on the design process with the objective of assessing uh, performance and handling qualities for understanding the physics behind and for validating the models and that were initially uh, produced with numerical methods. So on this kind of campaign, the main technical challenge is to respect the rules for managing the scaling effect. And we faced a challenge that is undoubtedly the project management with many components, many players, with really an aggressive timeline. And on the D-Day, in the wind tunnel test, when the flow is blowing, the only way to succeed was to rely on the ability of the team to adapt. The second example is on the development of the electrical power generator, uh, which is at the core of the uh, hybrid propulsion system. The objective were to validate the design, the assembly and the integration of each component while ensuring safety and operability. Test required lots of system tuning in a very short time. And I think that on that we've demonstrated a very strong resilience of the team, able to invest personally, to connect with Capgemini expert and able to, to keep calm whatever situation by applying um, rigorous system engineering methodology. I think these examples are perfectly illustrating our daily engagement as business partner from Next Generation Aviation and it shows how crucial it is to bring all expertise together and also to create a condition to, for innovation to emerge faster. Absolutely. As I mentioned before, the ecosystem is key for us, and especially as we go deeper and deeper in the industrialization and uh, into the certification pr process, we need to have access to a lot of expertise and resources. And I see partners like Capgemini as an accelerator uh, to go to the market and facilitator to have some uh, success. Thank you, Jean-Christophe. Thank you, Mylène.